Welcome back to Fixing with Friends. Today we're just going to jump right back into where we left off. Dash is out and uh, Michael's going to drop by to help me put some LEDs in. Let's get to it. So I think that's quite enough working inside the car for right now. I'm going to pull out the gauges and stuff and swap out those bulbs. It may take a little while because with LEDs you can only put them in in one direction. Um, because the current doesn't flow both ways. It's a diode. Anyway, um, oh hey, I found the other sponge. We've got the back of the dash here. These are the gauges. Nice and easy to pull out now that the dash is out. Hmm. I wonder how difficult it would be to replace it with that new foam and do a mold out of whatever the new Mazdas use. Because that's a nice foam. It's squishy, durable. This is quite rigid by comparison and also apparently not so durable. My dash is actually in surprisingly good condition compared to a lot of them. Just realized I didn't keep track of which connections go where. Okay. Oh, I have a wiring diagram. Across that bridge one. Don't get clocky. Sorry. Ah, and the bulb is already out for us. Although. These are the ones I got. These are the ones I need. So I need these bulbs. Should go get my screwdriver set. Nope, it's not even here. So this is what a partly mechanical clock looks like. This is right before they moved to quartz clocks, uh, but after mechanical, so this was a nice transitional period. This one works better than a lot of them, but it's still not nearly as reliable as a quartz clock. So right in here, oh, what have I done? This little plastic cup. Uh, tints the light green for the dash. I'm going to remove those so we can have the pink, or not pink, but the purple-ish color. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to have any use for them, so maybe I'll sell them, or maybe I'll hold on to it so I can put everything back dock. better way of doing this. Tell me now. I don't really want to risk breaking it. I always glue the tabs back in, but you can't place the actual 
top itself. Well, you could, I guess, 3D printing. So we're attempting to get these LEDs, which I bought, uh, are the only ones I could find 12 volt in purple, um, into this style of fitting. So that's what we're working on right now. Um, you can see this is what it looks like. Just an LED with some resistors, resistors on it. And yeah. We'll see how that goes. Let's go. Let's go somewhere that we can test this. Nope. <laughs> Theoretically, yes. After breaking the glass, we were able to melt the solder on the bottom of the fitting, which is the positive side of the light bulb, and we just needed to ensure that the positive resistor uh, was resoldered onto the bottom and the negative onto the wall. And in theory, it should work. As a matter of safety, I do not recommend you test them in the same manner that we will be. We'll also see if I've given you the incorrect directions. It's on. Yay! Well, what are the chances? Huh. Oh. Yep. That was stupid. <laughs> That's what I get for trying to look at it. Do you have any luck with that method? Uh, no, I didn't really have a method, but I have an idea. Okay. Tape around it, then crush it with the flat of a knife or something, and the tape will keep the glass from going everywhere. It's very similar to my idea. Yeah. Only with tape. With Never tape, had. and it actually holds the uh, glass in place. So if you Throw that to me, I'll put it in the bag as a secondary. glasses up. Yeah. So you push it and then you melt the solder that you want to suck and you put this near it and you suck it up. Cool. Getting it pointed at exactly the right place takes a little bit of practice but cool. That would help a lot since I have a lot of trouble with too much. And what do you do? How do you get it up? 
Well, usually I just melt it off and then start it here. Yeah. This is what you get for watching all of the seasons of MacGyver. Is there a new one? Don't they revive MacGyver? Could be. Around here I realize that if I hold the fitting with one set of pliers and twist with the other, I can actually remove the glass almost in its entirety uh, a lot easier than having to smash it and then chip out the lower part. Right, so also the angle isn't quite as wide as I would like because they're quite LEDs are quite directed. Basically, if you want it to come at an angle, you usually need some. Well, it'll just it'll change the lensing on top of the chip. Yeah. Fun for like wiping it. Yeah, yeah. Right. good idea. Otherwise, it's wet paper towel. All right, you should just use this board. <laughs> it helps because it um, actually causes the uh, well. So it causes because it's wet. It causes the solder that touches it to cool and solidify instantly. And so then it sticks to the sponge or to the paper towel. You can do it with a paper towel. And then when you pull it off, then the glob sort of goes with it. That's good. So it makes it way easier to get the glob of solder off the of the eye. Because on ours, it just kind of smears it around. Yeah. Okay. Having, a, having a reasonably good iron helps. This isn't the best iron in the world, but it's, it's pretty nice. challenge to get back out. Reinstalling the bulbs was quite difficult. I had to compress the spring manually with one hand and then, as you can see, actually push it, the bulb down and into the recess so it'll stay um, some of them were easier than others, but you'll see why in a little bit. Uh, secure. Mm, like an electrical connection. So definitely anyone replacing the bulbs in one of these S30s uh, will likely have more success if you melt that uh, little ball of solder just a little bit to give you more space when you're putting in the new bulbs. It's a little bit of a clearance issue.
You think that's straight enough? It's a little dusty. Make sure to replace the electrical tape. Uh, you just put it on so that it doesn't scrape the inner wall of the housing, I guess, of the dash when you're putting this back in. Stick. Alright, so that's where we're ending the video today. I'm sorry, did you expect to see the LEDs or something? Okay, fine. We'll, we'll do that now. Are you guys ready? So, apparently, I have to pull the steering column cover off again. Because there's no power going to the tachometer. Just the lights. That's the LEDs. Sorry, the nighttime video quality wasn't fantastic, but that's just the way this camera is. I'm going to throw together the video with how to fix the wiring in the dash so that because not all of the S30s had the wiring done correctly, uh, which really isn't an issue for, you know, if you're just replacing the bulbs with incandescence or fluorescence or something else like that. But if you're putting LEDs in, because the polarity matters, then you need to make sure that the prongs going in are actually lined up to where they're supposed to be on the uh, connectors. So, you can do a video on that. I don't know, if you guys are getting tired of seeing all the stuff on just the dash and the Datsun, let me know, because I'm more than happy to, in, that, in fact, I might, we'll see, switch in some video from later just to mix it up. Otherwise, I'll continue on with what else we did while the dash was off. So, see you soon.